Hello, I'm Hannah from Transforming Nuts Together and today I'm joined by Adam Baker from Refugee Roots. Adam, I wonder if you could just let people know a little bit about what you guys do. Hi, so um, we are a charity that works with refugees and asylum seekers in Nottingham and we help them find friendship and a place to call home. We're a Christian charity and we work with asylum seekers and refugees to overcome the barriers and navigate the complexities of building a new life here in the UK through a range of empowerment initiatives including befriending, accompanying and also through support such as English classes and offering information and advice and guidance. And I'm guessing, judging by the sound of what you do, that actually a lot of what you do was affected by lockdown. How have you been creative? Um, how have you responded to lockdown situations? Have you been able to carry on what you do? Have you had to change stuff? We've had to change a fair amount of what we've done. We love to get people together in groups mm. and that's a big part of the way that we work. So we haven't been able to meet uh, as, as a group and things like our weekly access project are unable to take place in the, in the lockdown. But we have been able to adapt our befriending services and our support as well so that we can still facilitate that that kind of support through telephone befriending and also um, by providing a phone helpline as well where people can contact us and we can provide information and advice on, on whatever issues they may be facing. We are also able to, as best as possible, create groups through using things like Zoom and WhatsApp and we're running some English classes on Zoom as well um, and that's been that's been really great. Unfortunately it's only the those who have um, the means of obtaining internet or have money enough money to pay for mobile data that can join those sessions which is why we've offered telephone English lessons as well to those who don't have internet access and we've worked closely with food banks and with shareware clothing scheme to make sure that people's basic needs are met as well. So we've continued to provide that, that support as well. Again, not like before, not through our drop-in where people can come and help themselves to items that we make available at our projects, but through the support of local food banks and volunteers, the local authorities, whoever is able to deliver things to our participants, we've been able to make sure that people's needs are met. <clears throat> that's on my mind a lot at the moment is what next as lockdown restrictions ease um we hear that needs are going to go up what are you, have you got plans what are you thinking what's what next for um, refugee routes it's very very hard to plan for what we don't know yet mm. but some of the things that we are looking at and we're encouraging our volunteers to be considering in particular those that had a face-to-face -face befriending relationship before and perhaps even those that are local to Nottingham that are volunteering through telephone befriending is that they could begin to have some face-to-face -face contact in public spaces in the open with some social distancing measures in place following the guidance of course of the government and, and perhaps just getting a bit more into what was our, our, our typical kind of support um, in that respect. The, the prospect of our groups getting back together um, is, is less likely in currently, but uh, for now we, we are looking at how our volunteers might be able to have just that a little bit more contact and a little bit more of a human touch to what we're doing as well. We'll see is the answer. Mm. It's really hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard, but we'll, conti we'll continue working with local charities and partners as well, especially with the, the need for things like food and clothing where if we we were only relying on our volunteers which we've, we've got plenty of volunteers it's really great that lots of people have at this time signed up to volunteer because they've got more free time or they they feel they just want to do something given the crisis without the support of other groups and organizations those deliveries would be less possible and the amount of requests that we're getting for things like food and and for closing have increased. Maybe it just seems that way because it's phone calls coming in or referrals coming in, whereas when it was regularly part of our support and our groups, it was usually the same people that were accessing that support. But now it's a whole range of people being referred in or contacting us. So we very much appreciate ongoing work with the, the local churches, food banks and charities and organisations to to make that possible so yeah it's incredible just how people have come together yeah i hope that carries on the unity and the working together have you got a story one particular story that you could share with us 
Um, yeah, I definitely do. I've got a story of a young man who we were we started supporting just before lockdown, and we matched him with a, an English teacher, um, telephone kind of relationship. He was receiving calls each week, and they were working through some English conversation, and he was also joining one of our online uh, lessons. Now, just before lockdown, he was he was given leave to remain, and but his his accommodation had expired, so he had to move out of his home office accommodation, and still hadn't found somewhere by the time lockdown kicked in, and so he had been sofa surfing and homeless and he was removed from a, a property where he was staying and contacted us to tell us that he was now homeless and working with a number of different agencies it was night stop with the first organization who we able to provide uh, immediate accommodation that was temporary so for a few nights the young man was able to stay with a volunteer from night stop and then we had a successful referral to tun tum housing association and that was going to be in a it was going to be in a, a shelter kind of accommodation but the man is now in a shared house and that's um, much more long term. Well thank you so much Adam for speaking to us it's just encouraging to hear how people are being creative in responding and making sure that people that they work with and that they support are still loved still cared for thank you so much for Adam for all you and your team do at Refugee Roots it's just an honour great to speak to you. Well thank you for your support and certainly for the prayer network as well and for, for anybody listening in and tuning into this, whatever you're doing, however you're contributing to change, despite the circumstances around us, thank you very much. And you can find out more about us at refugeeroots.org.uk.